Do you ever feel like life is a bit too complicated? There's too many things going on. There's too many priorities to balance. Things are a little bit out of sync. If you feel that life is a bit too complicated and we should get back to the basics, then click the like button. I'm Reverend Kyle Dorr from St. John's Presbyterian Church in Grimsby, welcoming you to our online service today. We are so thankful that you were here with us. Um, and, uh, you know, we're really thinking about that idea of, of balance today uh, and things maybe feeling a little bit precarious. Uh, in just a few minutes, Reverend Maria is going to share with us uh, her message uh, from 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 11, uh, about the divine reset and finding that balance. And today you're going to learn about what you can do just to get back to basics. Because I don't know about you, uh, but sometimes things feel a little bit uh, precarious. We're not really sure uh, what we should do to make it right. If we take one thing out, the whole works is going to collapse. But if we get back to basics, then we can find a firm, solid foundation that won't really shift because we're rooted in the love of Christ and the knowledge of God. But before we get into that, just a, a couple of uh, quick announcements um, coming up this afternoon at 1 p.m. Uh, February 27th uh, will be our annual meeting. This will take place on Zoom. Uh, you did uh, receive uh, the, the Zoom link earlier and again uh, with the um, email that was uh, sent out to you this weekend uh, about the annual meeting. So you will uh, see that Zoom link. You can connect by your computer or by telephone. And uh, that's our annual meeting. And also, uh, Reverend Maria and I and Nancy are here in the sanctuary today leading worship. And we welcome you back into uh, our building uh, for worship uh, next Friday morning at 11. That's March the 4th or March the 6th at 9.30 a.m. Uh, we will continue with the Friday and Sunday in-person worship services as well as chair chats beginning on March the 8th. So lots of things to look forward to, uh, but as we uh, get ready to worship uh, and get back to basics, let's just take a moment to uh, quiet our bodies, still our minds, and be ready to hear God's good news today. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Dear God, our loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning. We come to you in prayer, asking for the type of focus that only you can provide in this busy world. Help us to focus on your blessings, your goodness, and your greatness. Open our hearts to receive your powerful and transforming Holy Spirit. Help us to ignore any distraction that might come between you and us. May we always rejoice your presence in our lives and may your Holy Word guide, strengthen and support us as we are ready to worship you in spirit and in truth. Gracious Heavenly Father, we also came as sinners, longing for your forgiveness from our failures. We confess that we often act like a lost sheep, forgetting that we have a good shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, you blessed us with families, friends, neighbors, the community of faith, as well as with a larger community. But so often we only think of ourselves. Help us to be faithful to your calling, to love our neighbors, and to find ways to help them to see the good in everything. So Lord, we ask you, to attend this worship, melt us, mold us, 
and use us to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. is taken from 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 11 the Christian's call and election his divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness to the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness thus he has given us through these things his precious and very great promises so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and may become participants of the divine nature for this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness, and goodness with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, and godliness with mutual affection, and mutual affection with love. For if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and is forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election, for if you do this, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus. Friends, for a few weeks now, in the Minutes of Maria, we have um, followed the topic, The Divine Reset. And what I am going to do today is kind of summarize those little parts that uh, you might have heard uh, when uh, The Minutes with Maria was put on the internet. So, first I would like to ask you that with a quick show of hands, Indicate if you agree that in every once in a while, going back to basics is a good idea. Well, don't be afraid at home either. This might be just a good exercise to, to say hello to one another and to, to uh, remember that it is indeed good to going back to basics. This Bible passage for today certainly implies that. Second Peter calls for a return. If we had time to read a little bit more from um, the first chapter of Second Peter, 
Peter will say, I will always remind you of these things. The author certainly suggests and proceeds to go over some basic facts of how Christians should grow and serve the living God. Second Peter is an intense, passionate farewell speech addressed to Christians. The Bible scholars say that uh, Second Peter was written by either Peter, the Apostle Peter, or someone else, but definitely at the old age. Whether the author is Peter or someone else, we Christians are challenged to continue to grow in faith, love, and service. This short book, containing only three chapters, refrain from introducing many new insights. Rather, it erects a giant warning sign against common pitfalls that endanger living a good and godly life. Please note that Peter mentions this parallel because they belong together. A good life is a godly life and vice versa, a godly life is a good life. The key word knowledge echoes through this letter. Knowledge is a powerful thing in every aspect of life, including spiritual. Peter refreshes the reader's memories how important knowledge is. Knowledge places us on a solid ground. As an example from the Bible, I can mention Job. In the book bearing his name, in chapter 19, verse 25, Job declares, I know that my redeemers, my redeemer lives. Or some older translation says, I know that my redeemer liveth. That strong I know saves him, restores him, uplifts him, gives him hope, blesses him with perseverance and self-control. And these are the exact words from our reading today. Second Peter is taking us back to the basics with step-by-step -step instructions of how to live our lives that pleases God. Are we ready to discover some fundamental truth that encourages personal growth in Christ, which ultimately helps us to build God's kingdom? That's good, because the opening sentence of today's reading is this, the divine power has given us everything. Let me say it again and, and highlight it. His divine power has given us everything. Almost like saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Simple, basic, isn't it? It is for a while, especially when things are going well in our lives. But what about when trying times creep in? What do we do beside crying or whining? Growing up, my grandmother who raised me managed to make me believe for the longest time that the 11th commandment is Thou shall not whine. I will always remember that. Here is the thing. For my birthday, I have received a new coffee maker, one of those fancy ones. Lovely little machine, my favorite color, red. And it worked well for a while until I pressed some buttons too many times and messed up with the factory programming. I needed help. The coffee maker needed a reset. 
Step by step, the representative told me on the phone how to reboot. And at the end, the machine went back to its original factory setting, back to basics. And the representative on the phone told me that, by the way, there was a manual in the original box, but I send you another one. That was nice, wasn't it? The same principle applies to computers, phones, other machines, tablets, televisions. Reset, reboot, restart became everyday words and actions that we all need to do time to time. Are you still with me? Fantastic, because I also believe that time to time in life, we also need a restart and God is offering to us a divine reset more often than we deserve or even realize. At times, our Creator is encouraging us to press the restart button and make practical changes in our lives that will help us to improve our lives. For instance, we need modification in our diet, shift our focus, prioritize more wisely, change direction, or start something new. Other times, God hits the restart button without our permission. And oh my God, I love when that happens because the outcome is always amazing, unexpected and beautiful, something that we never dreamed or believed that it is possible. So let God transform, change, modify, melt, mold, reshape as often as he sees fitting to do so. Some other times, painful, fearful, or unspeakable things come into our lives. These are the times when making the tiniest adjustments seem too daunting. For such time, here are some basic sentences from the Bible that can come to our aid. We remember what the Apostle Paul said, at the end, everything will work together in perfect harmony. Or in the book of Revelation, it is God who makes all things new. And we all know that nothing can stand in God's way. Everything, absolutely everything is possible for the Lord. God invites and encourages us to press the reset button as a life practice, every day if it's needed. How? First and foremost, by using the divine manual that is given to us. Yes, the Bible. The entire Bible is an invitation to reset. All stories, parables, historical facts, commandments, prophetic wisdom, the gospel, everything, it is a written manual to live a life the Creator intended. When we read the Bible, we discover the solution, solution to hopelessness, bitterness, loneliness, pain, depression, entanglement in sin, just to mention a few. We realize that Jesus is the only way out, the only one who can free us from sin, and he is the only one who empowers us to do great things. The peace and joy we find in Jesus will be witnessed by those around us. It is like a display of God's glory on earth. This is how we encourage one another in faith. 
in brotherly love and hope. This is our calling after all. Another winning choice of being a participant in the Divine Reset is to make peace to everyone, to deepen our relationships, our connections to our loved ones, family members, friends, neighbors, even to strangers. As the saying goes, it costs nothing to smile, but our smile can make a difference in someone's day. I know, I know that relationships can be complicated, hard, perhaps seem impossible to make amends, but it were to try. A hospital chaplain once made a research among patients who were dying, asking them about their greatest regrets. Many of them expressed their deep sorrow that they neglected to attempt to do the right thing and to reach out. So let us make no delay. Let us make that phone call, write that letter, knock on the door, because as Jesus reminds us, the door only will be opened if we knock. Or as 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 recommends, let love be your highest goal, for love will conquer everything. The third winning choice for a successful divine reset is thankfulness. The Apostle Paul smartly advises us to the importance of having a thankful heart. In everything, in absolutely everything, he says, give thanks. Thankfulness is a mindset and need to be practiced. The absence of being thankful can be the root of many underlying problems such as taking everyone and everything granted. Ungrateful people are unhappy because nothing seems to be enough. They are close-minded, opposing any changes. They are bitter and often depressed. The good news is that with a simple exercise, all these can be reversed. We have to practice to be thankful from the minute we open our eyes in the morning until we close them at night. Remember those little prayers we used to repeat when we were children? The basic ones, like, Now I lay down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. May God cry guard me through the night and wake me up in the morning light. Those basic ones. Nothing is wrong to repeat those little prayers, which brings us to another important exercise in allowing God to implement the divine reset, and that is prayer. Again, the Apostle Paul instructs us to pray without ceasing, all the time. No quitting, no giving up, perseverance. Are you still with me? Great, because now we are going to make the point between our Bible reading and everything I said in the last 13 or 14 minutes. Our text today is super highly concentrated, loaded with nice sounding spiritual and religious language. And that is why it is so easy to skip when we are reading it. But when we pause or read it again, we realize that there are so much there. It is a very rich text indeed. Imagine that this letter is written to you personally. 
Just like when we use a recipe to make a delicious meal, the instructions were written to a large audience. But when we are using that recipe, it is ours. A step-by-step -step basic manual is given by our text today to undergo a divine reset, a transformation that pleases God. There are eight easy steps in our Bible reading today. There are eight steps in this process. And the first being assumed that we already have it, that is faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter says, now to faith, add goodness. Deep down, we all know what is good and what is acceptable to God. But sometimes we are reluctant to apply them. To any recipe to stay with that topic, I try to add as much vegetable as I can because I know that vegetable is good for us. So let us choose those good virtues to add to our faith and see what happens. Peter then continues to instruct us to cover every aspect of our life with knowledge. Gaining knowledge is always advisable, isn't it? Knowledge opens our mind. Someone once said that the day we stop learning is the day we die. To knowledge, we need to add self-control because this is one of the virtues that help us to remain humble. The next ingredient is perseverance or steadfastness. Take a little tiny seed, for instance. It is only through perseverance that it will grow. For our own spiritual growth, this component is like the salt to any recipe. And the list continues with godliness, the Apostle Paul says. And he recommends, um, the Apostle Peter says, and the Apostle Paul in, in another letter recommends that be the imitators of Christ. And the last two ingredients on Peter's list are speaking for themselves, and that is brotherly kindness and love. All these qualities, friends, the apostle continues, will protect us from being ineffective and unproductive. Harsh words, aren't they? These qualities will protect us from being ineffective or unproductive. People who neglect to be open-minded, Peter calls them near-sighted or even blind. People who are ungrateful and forget about the many blessings and the forgiveness of their sins will fall short before the throne of God. On the other hand, if we sought after these qualities, we will never fall. What an assurance, what a promise. But this is nothing compared to the greatest promise our today's text states which is being welcomed into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just eight steps to receive this richest blessing. These steps, like building blocks, perfectly fitting to one another, 
complementing each other and they are certainly a godly manual to follow whether we want it or not whether we are even aware of it or not there is a divine reset is happening in the body of christ this means that the good lord is providing us with possibilities and new beginnings the holy spirit is turning off the regular the so-called normal the everyday the same old same old and blessing us with new ways new opportunities that we are never dreamed of jesus in the gospel of luke supplies us with a great advice seek ye the first the kingdom of god and all these things will be given to you we seek the kingdom when we focus on the promise of god that we have an inheritance awaiting in heaven when we decide to take part in the divine reset we have to remember that our actions are must be aligned with, with god's will because god's will is always the best will always amen let us now talk to our heavenly father let us bow our heads and let us pray holy and loving god thank you that you created us care for us and that you love us on this snowy winter day still we need an extra reminder that you are here for us because every once in a while our faith needs to be strengthened our mind needs to be guided into the right direction and our spiritual eyes needs to be reopened to see your goodness all around us to feel your divine grace and love that is upon us may this be a day when we fully understand what it means to love one another what it means to give ourselves wholly to you what it means to uh, to allow you to do the divine reset god of grace we pray for those who feel broken whether it is uh, spiritual brokenness whether they are just tired of this long uh, winter whether they are in despair because all kinds of and all different life circumstances we ask you to lord ask you lord to heal the broken hearted and uh, attend all those who are recovering from surgery or other medical procedures or uh, they are waiting for uh, medical procedures or surgeries lord or just trying to heal at home. Visit them, Lord, with your powerful spirit and heal them. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who uh, fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them we pray for those also who chose power over peace we pray that your wisdom and compassion will bring uh, common sense above all lord we pray for your precious children, young and old, in that worn, torn country, and help them, Lord. Lift them up and help this world, Lord, as we unite 
for Ukraine. Make us always attentive to your Holy Spirit, Lord. And uh, may we always feel your presence that surrounds us. Thank you, Lord, that you spoke to us today. Thank you for your holy word, the direction that you were trying to give us. And again, may we always be open uh, to you and your powerful spirit to do the work that is needed to be done inside ourselves and around us. In Jesus' name we pray, who taught us the following prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I want to thank uh, Reverend Maria for preaching for us today and for uh, to Allison for reading and to Nancy for the technical assistance and uh, Derek for helping us to uh, find our music this day. Again, a reminder of our annual meeting coming up this afternoon at 1 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to connect and share uh, what's been going on and, and where we hope to go. As we leave worship today, I want you to remember uh, all the words of the great um, message that Maria gave us about the divine reset. And we have now all of the basic building blocks that we need to build a balanced life that is uh, rooted in the love of Christ and built on the solid foundation and our faith in God with the help of the Holy Spirit. And so as we go from this place today, let us use these basic building blocks to rebuild our lives, to help us uh, experience the divine reset and, and God's incredible blessings for us this day. And so go from uh, this time of worship, being filled with the love of God, our Heavenly Father, the peace of Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, our Savior, and the assurance that the Holy Spirit is there to guide and bless us each step of the way. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.